So, we will uh, talk about uh, mainly two concepts before we wind up the discussion on the fractional quantum Hall effect. The first one of them uh, is the, the composite fermions. And this was uh, introduced by J. K. Jain. Okay. Uh, so, this is an alternative approach to understand the fractional quantum Hall effect and particularly uh, to understand the even denominator fractions that are observed experimentally, whereas the Laughlin states um, are valid for uh, the odd uh, denominators which are of the form of uh, 1 over m, where m being an odd integer. So, uh, particularly you know uh, the fractional uh, feeling of uh, nu equal to half uh, was uh, to be explained which is one of the simplest fractions, but uh, uh, of course, um, this cannot be uh, explained with the, the concept of the Laughlin wave function, uh, the Laughlin states which are for odd denominator. All right. So, uh, this uh, picture uh, the composite fermion which we will call as uh, CF uh, as abbreviation. Uh, so, this is an effective picture it uh, comprises of uh, you know quasi particles uh, which are uh, the electrons uh, they are carrying um, even number of flux quantum. So, they absorb the flux quantum from the external field and um, uh, so they uh, sort of uh, are considered as quasi particles and uh, these composite fermions um, uh, drastically reduces the complexity of the problem and uh, one actually gets uh, starting from a very uh, sort of strongly interacting fermionic system uh, which is the nature of the quantum Hall fluid, uh, we uh, get a picture of non interacting fermions. And um, so, uh, this was a, a very nice idea and uh, not only uh, it is an idea, but it also has uh, the implications of relevance on the experiments such as uh, the Shubnikov de Haas oscillations uh, and uh, they also verified in uh, thermo power experiments and so on. So, uh, they are of course, uh, ideas and uh, in reality there are no other uh, electrons do not uh, sort of absorb this uh, even number of flux quantum, uh, but uh, it is a picture that uh, aids us in understanding the uh, fraction quantum Hall effect. Okay. Uh, so, let us try to you know visualize this. So, what happens is that so these are uh, I am drawing an electron to be really large and uh, this is carrying uh, 2 flux quantum. So, uh, so let us call this as 2 Cf uh, and uh, here they are 4 flux quantum. So, let us call this as 4 Cf and then there are say even larger number of flux quantum which are uh, say the 6 of them. So, this uh, let us call it as 6 Cf. Okay as if it is a bound state of an electron and even number of flux quanta. So, that is the intuitive picture as I told you that it is not a real picture it really does not happen that uh, these fermions actually uh, absorb even number of flux quantum, but suppose we assume that these are the uh, this is the situation in uh, sort of uh, for the uh, fractional quantum uh, fluid uh, that these fermions have absorbed or uh, they are really carrying this uh, even number of flux quantum then of course, uh, the picture changes the intuitively and it gives rise to something that is uh, quite interesting. And as I said that it has a relevance or rather it conforms to the experiments um, that are you know made or rather they are performed 
and um, uh, these picture uh, supports those uh, experiments. Okay. So, two sort of artifacts happen. Uh, so, it is experiments there are others as well, but we have not I have not written them uh, such as thermo power SDH oscillations. Uh, we have discussed this in our earlier lecture Shubnikov Dehas oscillations etcetera. are supported by these CF picture. Number two, so uh, it of course explains um, the fractional feeling of the Lando levels and uh, uh, basically their and their connection to FQHE. And third and probably the most important thing which I just said is uh, let me write it in the next page uh, 3 and uh, this is quite important. So, this says that the strongly interacting electrons absorbing most of the flux quantum quanta rather become weakly interacting electrons electrons in a weak magnetic field. And this tells you that the latter corresponds to the uh, integer quantum Hall effect which we have seen. So, this picture of uh, FQHE this goes over to IQHE. So, this is for fermions IQHE for composite fermions. Okay. So, this is a big um, simplification that occurs. Okay. So, let us see what uh, happens and how it happens and so on. Okay. So, uh, we just said that uh, you know the electrons actually absorb uh, the flux quanta. So, uh, the effective field is reduced. So, let us write down the effective field. which we will call it as B star which is actually reduced in the CF picture is given by. So, B star is equal to B which is an external field and then there are uh, these even number of uh, flux quantum which we write as 2 P and uh, then uh, each one carrying a flux phi and the density of the, the composite fermions. So, uh, B star uh, of course, that is written. So, let me write B which is the external magnetic field okay. 2 P even number of flux quantum Uh, phi 0 of course, you know that that is a flux quantum which is equal to H over E and rho density of C f. So, this tells you that uh, the magnetic field the effective magnetic field or the reduced magnetic field is given uh, by this expression which is this B is the external field. And now, since these uh, fermions have um, absorbed most of the, the flux uh, from the external field. So, the, the field uh, now remains as this 
and um, let us now see that what this means in terms of the electron filling. So, the filling fraction for the CF, uh, let us call that as nu star uh, in keeping with a B star which is equal to rho phi 0 divided by B star. Okay? And uh, this is of course understood that the B is uh, pointing in the z direction. So, uh, so we should uh, also mention that here. So, B is in this direction, the external field is in this direction. And uh, let us call this as equation 1 and this as say equation 2 that is the definition of a uh, filling fraction which is uh, rho uh, that is the density of the fermions uh, composite fermions multiplied by phi 0 divided by the B star. So, a uh, putting 1 in 2 what I mean is uh, put this uh, this B star uh, B minus 2 P phi 0 rho in 2. Uh, one gets a new star to be equal to a rho phi 0 divided by b minus 2 pi phi 0 into rho. Okay. So, I write phi 0 as h over e and uh, this is e and this b minus 2 p phi 0 rho. Now, what I do is uh, I take this uh, rho also down and then sort of rho h e to be down. So, this is like a 1 divided by e over rho h and a b minus a 2 p phi 0 rho. Uh, and then a little bit of algebra. So, I take this in. So, it is e b by rho h and a minus 2 p uh, phi 0 rho into e by rho h. So, uh, rho will cancel and e by h is 1 over phi 0. So, that will cancel as well and we are left with e b over rho h which is nothing but the uh, filling fraction of the original fermions. Okay? Uh, so, this is the inverse of it rather. So, it is 1 over nu minus 2 p and so on. So, this is the thing and uh, so let us call this as equation 3 and uh, then we can write down the nu star in terms of um, this uh, nu to be equal to nu minus uh, 1 minus 2 p nu and let us call this as equation 4. So, this is the expression for the uh, filling of uh, the composite fermions and its relation to the filling of the actual fermions uh, which are there in the in the system and this p is equal to 1 2 3 and uh, 2 p uh, denotes the number of vortices or the number of flux quantum which are actually vortices I'll just come to that okay so uh, it can be actually uh, inverted so, e, uh, 1 over a uh, new star this is equal to a plus minus. So, this is equal to 1 over new minus 2 p and uh, so this is the you know the filling fraction uh, relationship between the filling fraction and just take a note that we have written both plus and minus signs and they would uh, you know give rise to a new uh, different fractions. So, to say both signs are actually allowed. So, uh, plus and minus signs are allowed. Uh, depending on whether B star is in the direction of of B or opposite to it. Okay. So, this is let us call it as 5 it is same 4 and 5 are same is just written in a different language and this can again be written in another language in which you can um, see that. So, if you write down uh, the new in terms of uh, new star then it becomes equal to a 2 p new star plus 1 and this is 
the equivalent expression uh, where nu is the filling of the original problem of uh, the Hall conductance or Hall resistance. And um, so, uh, for nu uh, less than 1 which is what we are talking about fractional filling. Uh, nu star is greater than 1 ok. And uh, when uh, the nu star becomes large it corresponds to the or rather it is an integer ok. It is uh, equal to 1 or greater than 1 and becomes an integer uh, then it corresponds to the uh, non degenerate state and the non degenerate state of course, would uh, correspond to weak interaction or no interaction at all. Uh, which means that we go to the uh, case of IQHE ok. So, let me make this a little more clear because um, so the filling factor is defined in the following way. It is also called as filling fraction. So, this is equal to a rho divided by a degeneracy ok. So, now if rho that is the density of electrons fermions uh, that becomes um, equal to the degeneracy which means that uh, the integer number of Landau levels are filled and uh, if it becomes 2 say uh, the rho is twice of the degeneracy which means 2 Landau levels are completely filled and this situation would correspond to uh, exactly what we have studied in the context of IQHE that is integer quantum Hall effect and uh, the system corresponds to non degenerate states and or non degenerate scenario and um, that uh, sort of uh, should uh, explain uh, the non interacting electrons or very weakly interacting electrons which we have studied in the context of IQHE. Okay. So, this is the picture that emerges out of this composite fermion picture and uh, let us try to understand what is its relation to the Laughlin state. This is quite a, a nice explanation. So, follow me carefully. So, uh, remember the Jastrow factor and uh, the Jastrow factor actually says that uh, uh, so, there is a, a z i minus z j I might have written z j and z k these are just indices uh, which you can uh, take according to your convenience. So, there is a uh, this m and then of course, it is multiplied by the Gaussian. Let us look at the Jastrow factor only you would uh, sort of recognize that for each electron. So, z's are the coordinates of the z i uh, denote uh, the coordinate of these electrons and um, uh, this is basically enforces the uh, anti-symmetric property by when m is um, you know an odd integer and it also says that if z i becomes equal to z j uh, this uh, is not only 0, but it is 0 m times because of the product that is involved here. Uh, I hope this notation is clear we write a summation by this and we write a product by this. So, this is a sum and this is a product. Okay. So, this product of all i uh, i is less than j and uh, then it is a 0 of mth order and um, that is what comes out from the Jastrow factor and that is what is uh, embedded in the Laughlin state. Now, of course, we need 1 0 of those m 0s and 1 0 we need because of we want to enforce the exclusion principle. What happens to the m minus 1 0s ok? So, these m minus 1 0s account for what are known as vortices. So, let me write as 1 0 uh, ensures Pauli's exclusion principle. The rest m minus 1 zeros sort of account 
for the vortices. And uh, what are the vortices or what is a vortex? A vortex is actually a sort of a topological excitation. So, suppose uh, a, a complex number a complex number z equal to r e to the power i theta. All of you are familiar with this uh, polar representation. It has a vortex at the origin. Okay. Uh, so, which means that uh, if a particle uh, sort of encircles this origin, it picks up a phase 2 pi. So, that theta actually changes from theta to theta plus 2 pi and the complex number remains unchanged uh, in the sense that because you have a 2 pi i exponential 2 pi i is equal to 1. Okay. So, that is the meaning and uh, suppose these uh, the FQHE wave function contains a factor z minus z 0 to the power 2 p. Okay. We are writing m as uh, 2 p in the sense that uh, these are just to make p to be any integer not only odd integer. So, 2 p will be uh, so a p could be any integer so that 2 p is even 2 p is an even integer. So, you see here you have this m minus 1 is an even integer because m is an odd integer. So, m minus 1 is an even integer and so we write that as 2 p. So, this means that a fermion 1 sees fermion 2 to carry 2 p vortices or m minus 1 vortices. Okay. And uh, so, basically this means that uh, even number of vortices which is what the this composite fermion picture it uh, sort of uh, you know proposes. So, let me uh, tabulate a few uh, p and nu. p and nu with nu star to be an integer and I told you that uh, this corresponds to the IQHE when nu star becomes an integer. So, this is a p and a nu which is equal to a nu star and which is equal to a 2 p nu star plus 1 the formula that we have written earlier and let me just show it for p equal to 1. So, this gives rise to 1 third, 2 fifth and 3 seventh and so on okay, for a uh, new star to be an integer and uh, for p equal to this p equal to 1 here. Let us say p equal to minus 1 we get other integers which are 2 third, 3 fifth and 5 seventh and so on and uh, so 2 uh, will give rise to 1 by 5 and 2 by 9 and minus 2 will give rise to 2 by 7 and 3 by 11. So, you see all these uh, fractions have been seen in experiments they have been realized in experiments and that is why uh, just uh, having new star to be you know uh, integer values with p to be plus minus 1 plus minus 2 you can extend it to plus minus 3 etcetera. We are getting all kinds of uh, fractions which were not realized in the uh, Laughlin wave function I mean with the, with the Laughlin wave function which is only valid for uh, 1 over m. Ills fraction 
1 over m, where m is a odd integer. So, of course, 1 by 3 is in that form, but none of these other 1 by 5 is also of that form, but none other are, are included in the Laughlin wave function and these are called the non-Laughlin states. So, let me show you a, a picture, an intuitive picture of this whole thing. So, we will uh, draw, so this is 1, 2, 3, 4. So, uh, we will have this uh, usual fermions and then the composite fermion picture and uh, sort of their filling fractions will be compared. So, these are these uh, fermions which are carrying these vortices of the flux quantum and this corresponds to the original picture of uh, uh, fermions. This is like this, four of them in each of the three Landau levels and this corresponds to a filling fraction to be nu equal to 3 by 7. Okay. Uh, so, this is a fractional quantum Hall effect and when we go to the non-interacting picture or the picture of, um, so this, okay. So, this corresponds to nu star equal to 3. Okay. So, this is the it's a schematic plot. This shows IQHE uh, with filling, uh, filling factor equal to 3 and this corresponds to the FQHE with filling factor. equal to 3 by 7. Okay. So, this is the problem of FQHE becomes a problem of IQHE of the composite fermions. Okay. And uh, let us uh, do the last thing in this regard. We still are missing a number of fractions. Okay. Uh, even though we have been able to uh, go beyond the Laughlin picture and uh, and get a, a lot of other fractions from this composite fermions, but uh, we still are uh, not uh, have not got all the fractions that are uh, experimentally observed. Okay, and uh, there is a hierarchy picture. which again is very subtle. The idea is very subtle though, you know, getting a lot of other fractions uh, are not too difficult. So, this uh, sort of, you know, relies on the fact that there are other uh, filling fractions that are observed in experiments. Starting from some parent states, one can get Laughlin like daughter states, okay. So, from a given parent state, So, these are Laughlin like daughter states. Okay. So, these Laughlin like daughter states and the parent states which are very uh, interesting here and uh, these fractions at any level another important thing the fractions at any level. in this uh, hierarchy scheme
scheme are denoted as as continued fractions. So you might have seen this continued fractions uh, even in school. Uh, these uh, the fractions carry on and uh, here we will have uh, these uh, different uh, at a given level of the parent state we will have a multiple daughter state emerging out and we will give a large number of these fractions uh, coming out and so on. Uh, it is not that all the fractions are uh, seen in experiments which are predicted from this hierarchy scheme, but uh, quite a few of them have been uh, observed. Okay. And it is not that you know at, at a given uh, sort of Laughlin uh, at the daughter states at, the, at a given sort of hierarchy of the daughter states, uh, there could be many fractions and um, the probability to observe these fractions in actual experiments uh, uh, it, it seems to be the same whereas some of them are just uh, not observed at all some of them are of course observed uh, that tells you that uh, this of course does not distinguish between one fraction at a given level uh, from another fraction. Now, uh, physical picture uh, is necessary and the physical picture really relies upon uh, not the ground state which we have been talking about so far, but it relies on the excited state. And uh, so, you, you have a problem of you say a quantum mechanical problem and you have a Hamiltonian and you may be able to solve that Hamiltonian exactly or uh, maybe uh, there are you know mathematical difficulties or there are computational difficulties and so on, but it is very uh, easy to understand that these uh, quantum mechanical Hamiltonian will have a large number of uh, states possible which are energy states, there could be degeneracies and so on, but uh, forgetting the degeneracies for the moment there are ground state, there are first excited state and there are second excited states and so on. Rarely ever uh, one needs to go very far away from the ground state in condensed matter physics because we always talk about low lying excitations uh, which are which are the most important thing. I mean something that is far away from the ground state may not be taking part in either the thermodynamic or the transport properties at all. Um, so, it is quite important that uh, and we are sort of you know understanding that the Fermi level lies very close to uh, the ground state okay? and, and that is why the ground state is the most important thing. However, uh, in certain scenarios you may have to go beyond the, the ground state and take into account excitations and these excitations in this uh, fractional quantum Hall fluid are called as quasi particles and quasi holes depending upon the, the shortage of density or the excess of density. So, if you have excess of density of particle like uh, excitations which are like uh, quasi particle excitations and uh, if you have a deficit then of course, you have hole like or the quasi hole like excitations. Okay. So, um, Halperin wrote down. So, conjectured that these excited states have a form okay, which are uh, given by the psi of uh, z. Uh, this is a p of uh, z k which is our usual Jastro factor, uh, I mean z k minus uh, z j product of that and so on and so forth. And then there is a q which is again a function of z k and the ubiquitous um, uh, these Gaussian that would of course be there. Okay. Uh, we are familiar with this, this is a Jastro factor and um, And this uh, accounts for quasi particle and quasi hole excitations. And what did he uh, propose for these uh, QZK? So, the QZK he proposed to have a form which is equal to 
uh, it is again a product of j less than k and then it, it just goes all the way up to m and it is a z j minus a z k whole to the power plus minus 1 over m. Okay. We will not go into the details that was the answers that was made by him and of course, the p z k that is the Jastro factor of course, has this form j less than k to the power m it is a z j minus z k to the power 2 p. Okay. So, if you combine them then psi of z, uh, so this is uh, the excitation above the Laughlin state and the excitation has been included by these this uh, q z k term uh, which of course, um, you know uh, talks about uh, uh, either particle or hole the excitations of the system. Uh, so, you know at the middle of the uh, plateau a quantum hall plateau the density is uniform. Okay. And so, there are number of states that are pinned to a defect or an impurity. Now, as the magnetic field is ramped up, it is increased uh, beyond a certain value of the magnetic field, these uh, uh, fields or these states actually break away from the impurity and they uh, would cause a density imbalance. So, if the density becomes larger, we have a quasi particle excitation and if the density falls below, uh, then it becomes a it becomes a deficit it becomes a quasi hole excitation okay so this is uh, the idea of this so um, total uh, psi of z becomes uh, the product it is a j less than k and of course it goes to m and uh, then it's a z j minus a z k whole to the power 2p plus minus m 1 over m and then of course, that Gaussian thing will of course, be there. So, it is z uh, j square divided by 4 L b square. Okay. So, that is the form of the wave function, the excited state wave function. m is still an odd integer, uh, which is what Laughlin had said. Now, of course, you can understand that this gives you uh, instead of just m, this gives you the total j max. So, j uh, max the magnitude of that uh, it becomes equal to 2 p plus minus 1 over m and I will have to multiply it by n because there are n electrons okay? and I am just talking about the magnitude. So, this is n electrons and 2 p plus minus 1 over m. So, uh, this uh, filling fraction corresponding to this scenario can be obtained uh, if we note that the area, area of the quantum Hall fluid. is given by a equal to uh, so n then it is 2 p plus minus 1 over m which is that uh, j and then we multiply it, it by uh, the pi into uh, 2 m and l b square. Okay. So, that is the area and uh, the number of states within an area A is given by n curly n. Okay. So, n is equal to a B A over phi 0 where A is given by this which I just wrote. So, this is equal to phi over phi 0 this is equal to 2 P plus minus 1 over m and uh, m square n. Okay. So, that is the, uh, the number of states that you obtain and uh, when we get the number of states the filling fraction is given by this. Uh, so, nu is equal to uh, 1 by 2 p m square plus minus m. Okay. So, that is the filling fraction and this filling fraction can be uh, expressed in terms of uh, 
a continued fraction, but uh, importantly it needs to be noted that there is a term which is this which is in addition to the uh, m term that is there in the denominator. So, the Laughlin state only had this m term because Laughlin states only uh, you know remained in the ground state. So, it is a ground state wave function. So, the hierarchy, so the continued fraction or rather nu can be written in terms of the continued fraction as ok. So, nu is equal to 1 divided by so, this is uh, for you know uh, for different values of p uh, and different values of uh, m ok odd integer m and different values of p. So, this is equal to 1 plus m plus minus 1 divided by 2 p 1 uh, plus minus 1 divided by 2 p 2 plus minus and so on and so forth ok. So, this is the continued fraction that we talked about and so this is like a p is having all these values 1, 2, 3 etcetera and m has values 3, 5, 7 etcetera and then one can actually form uh, these continued fraction. So, let me show you one example of this continued fraction. So, let us just write uh, for all the p's let us call it a p j to be equal to 1 just to have a simple form. So, an m let us say equal to 3 that is also simple. So, at the third level uh, one has uh, you know uh, so, nu becomes equal to 1 divided by 3 plus minus 1 divided by 2 plus minus 1 divided by 2 plus minus and so on ok. So, at the third level for corresponding to this thing ok and uh, I mean till the third level then you can just drop uh, everything out here and then calculate what fraction is coming out from this continued fraction. So, uh, let me show you the picture for m equal to 3 and this p j equal to 1. So, the picture is like this. So, uh, we have uh, this so, at the third level, so this there is 1. So, this the parent state is equal to 1 over 3 ok. So, m equal to 1 over 3 and uh, there are uh, 2 branches that come out from the plus and the minus sign. So, let us write the plus branch here on the left and the minus branch on the right. So, uh, at the p 1 level, so uh, this is p j equal to 1. So, p 1 level are they all the pj is equal to 1, but you can have other fractions where p 1 equal to 1 and p 2 equal to say 2 and so on and so forth ok. So, this is equal to 7 by 2 that comes out from the positive branch ok. That is like uh, 1 over 3 and plus. So, this is how it is coming is that 1 over 3 and then uh, you have a plus and a minus and 1 over 2 ok. So, uh, this becomes equal to, so there are 1 by 3 plus 1 half that is uh, giving you the 7 by 2 uh, branch and then um, you know, uh, so that is the plus branch and the minus branch is coming out as 3 minus half uh, and that is that branch gives you 5 by 2. So, these are the fractions that are there and let me go to another level. So, this plus branch here that gives you a uh, 5 over 17 and uh, of course, uh, there is a 5 over 13 from the minus branch. Now, this one will have a plus branch and the minus branch as well and uh, this is coming out as 11 by 3 do it carefully and, uh, uh, and 7 by 3. Uh, coming from the plus branch and the minus branch. So, at the third level, uh, so starting from one uh, Laughlin fraction, uh, we get so many non Laughlin fractions uh, coming out of this um, you know the hierarchy picture 
okay and uh, it gives you of course a large number of fractions not all of them are seen and at the same level it sort of uh, even though it predicts that uh, the probability of getting this fraction should be same but that does not happen mm -hmm.